Hello everyone and welcome to this session where we will be sharing with you the top three benefits of reading books. And here with me to help me go through this is Andrew Mutua Karibu Sana. Thank you, sir. Happy yes. New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> yes. As we will be talking about the benefits of reading books, there will be a bonus session where we will talk about how do you incorporate this good habit into your busy schedule. So let's start off Bona Andrew. Mm -hmm. How what are the benefits? Like not in any particular order, but number one, what is the benefit of uh, reading books? Um, I look at reading books as a way to self-educate. Yes. And this reminds me of that famous quote by Mark Twain, which says, do not let your schooling interfere with your education. Right. And what is the difference between schooling and education? Schooling is when you go through an educational system. You go through class one to eight, then you go to high school, then you go to university, probably then do your master's or PhD. Yes. But education is, is a lifelong endeavor. Yes. Um, what could you add around that? I think that is very correct. You educate yourself. Uh, Robert Kiyosaki, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, puts it very clearly that um, no graduation day. <laughs> education on. is a lifelong process. And I think it's also a great opportunity when you're talking about investing in yourself. Right. Yeah. So you take time to educate yourself. You're investing in yourself. And of course, as we know, the return on investment when you invest in yourself is way much higher than any other investment that you can Correct. be able to have. You are the best deal out there. So put every effort in investing in who you are. And you, the best way to do it is educate yourself using channels like reading books. That is correct. I think the second benefit of reading books is that it gives you an opportunity to expand your mind, to expand your world view. And you're able to view things at a totally different perspective just because you are able to read books. Um, I was reading a book last year, A Few Money by Dunlop. <laughs> there was a very famous quote that really touched me by Oliver Holmes. It says, it goes something like, once a mind stretched by a new idea, it never goes back to its original dimension. Correct. And I think once you read a book and you interact with a new idea, your mind will never go back to its original dimension. I don't know what is your take on the same. Yeah, I agree, definitely. So, yes. I mean, books help you travel far and wide mm -hmm. beyond your current physical circumstance. You get to learn a great deal Mm -hmm. uh, from people who have um, mastered on various ideas or subjects or things of, uh, that, that interest you. So the, the way to grow your knowledge base, the way to grow a mastery on a particular subject will be through your, through your books. Um, and there was an element around how you improve on your reasoning. Yes. What, can you, what can you mention around that? There is a totally different way of reasoning if you compare a uh, class 8 dropout, someone who went through high school up to form 4, or even a graduate. And their reasoning is just expanded through reading and the different ideas that they are able to interact with. And I think that is uh, quite an order. And also when you talk about expanding your mind, I think there's a point that we had raised earlier about internationalism. We live mm. in a global, uh, global village. village and you don't necessarily need to go to a different country mm -hmm. to appreciate their culture and their way of life. Reading a book about that country takes you to that different place. So <laughs> you are able to embrace internationalism much, uh, much, much better, right? Mm, yes. Yes. Yeah, another point is this, is that famous mantra that readers are leaders. Mm -hmm. What can you say about that? Readers, I am yet to see a leader who is not a reader. And uh, the f there is a study in the US that an average CEO in the US reads about 52 books a year. That is one book a week. And the average American will read one book a year. And you can see the difference. So reading books actually takes you to that leadership uh, position. I don't know if there's any statistics uh, here in <laughs> Kenya about uh, how many how much yeah. books people read your guess is as good as mine <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my guess is that an average kenyan will read between zero to one book a year and a majority are the ones who won't read a book Correct. some will just start a book and they will not finish it by yeah, yeah. the end of the year yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true and um something else there is uh, when we talk about readers and leaders 
I want to bring in what um, I came to learn is called the E to E ratio. That is education to entertainment Same. ratio. Yeah. And the top 5% of successful people mm -hmm. tend to spend 95% of their time in education and only 5% in entertainment. While the rest, the big majority, spend 95% of their time in entertainment, entertainment. not education. Yeah. So I think it is a big clue. How do you become successful? Yeah. How do you become a leader? Yeah, you should be able to read books. Because I think that brings out the aspect of we all have 24 hours. Yes, yes. It's, it's a matter of how you spend your 24 hours. Yes. So if you're going to spend a bulk of it watching a TV, um, that means you can't read books. Yeah. Um, and what CEOs do or very successful people is out flip that. Yeah. Instead of spending their time behind the box uh, watching mindless TV is to spend that enhancing themselves, expanding their minds by reading books. I know we said we are going to talk about three main uh, benefits of reading books, but uh, as we always do, we give uh, over and above what we say. Yes. We can give some bonus uh, benefits. What would you add in terms of um, benefits of reading books? Yeah, I, I think books are also a way for us to get motivation and inspiration. Yeah, when we learn about other people's stories, yes, the autobiographies that we read, um, the insights that other people share about either struggles or uh, a stage in their life that they went through yeah. that could be similar to what we're going through that we can relate to. We are able to find a lot of inspiration and power to, you know, continue on and persist with our endeavors or our journeys whatever they might be. So it's, it's a source of motivation and inspiration. And that is correct. I think also that brings in the idea of mentorship. You can easily be mentored by someone you haven't met just by reading through their books. Mm -hmm. As um, I usually say, my key mentors, Darren Hardy, I've never met him, but I've interacted with his books, with his ideas, and he has influenced how I pursue life. And I think mentorship and motivation comes in very clearly. And uh, just also something I also want to mention. There are two books which really motivated me and inspired me. Um, the other year, 2018, I read a book, um, The Psychology of Selling by Brian Tracy. I read the first chapter. It blew my mind. It motivated me. I started taking um, even goals that I had left seriously and they said I need to pursue this. I got a lot of motivation based on what was written there so I was highly inspired. Last year one of the books that really blew my mind on the 10x rule by Grant Cardone. 10x. <laughs> so I did the audio book, I listened to it and the first chapter blew my mind off. I realized that I need to 10x everything that I'm doing and I think that level of motivation and inspiration it's very important. I will also add this. There is a program I listen to by Zig Ziglar and he says some people um, minimize the importance of inspiration and motivation and he gave this analogy. If you just uh, warming yourself at the fireplace or a bonfire. After some point, the fire goes down, there's no flame, there's no heat, just ashes. But once you take a stick and poke and poke and poke and poke the fire, within a short time, the flame goes up again. And I think that is what motivation uh, uh, do to us. Exactly. It just pokes and pokes and pokes, and the fire that was inside there now again comes up mm. as a very great source of motivation and inspiration. Books. Books. Something else, uh, you talk about communication, yeah? Mm. Yeah, tell us more about how does communication play a role uh, coming with reading? Yeah, so I think one way to improve your communication, yes. the vocabulary that you use, the ideas that you transmit, whatever it might be, uh, is enhanced more um, by your reading books. One, you'll acquire the knowledge to be able to speak of something with, with a lot more authority. Yes. And then two, you will be able to communicate an idea much more impactfully yeah. with with a lot of reading. Yeah. Um, so I, I would say it's a very great way to uh, improve your vocabulary and uh, your eloquence and fluency when you when you're communicating. That is very correct. Among other skills that you can get from reading books, I think the key one is communication skills. Correct. We did a survey last year mm. asking people. Um, what would be the key skills that if you learn 
they will help you move to the next level in your career. And number one was communication oh, skills. Yeah. And you can easily get that from reading books. Not necessarily communication books, but just books in general, okay. right? Yes. I think that is mainly it when it comes to the benefits of uh, reading. To the second part, very quick one. We want to show, uh, share with you how do you incorporate this whole idea or this great habit of reading books. Any suggestion, Brother Andrew? I think one, you need to set time. Right. So we, we spoke about that, the E to E ratio. Yeah. Um, a lot of successful people spend 95% of their time educating themselves by the reading books or taking courses and the like, um, and 5% in entertainment. Yes. The average person would typically flip that. 95% of their time Is will be spent in entertainment and 5% in, in, in some form of education. Right. Um, so if, if you're looking to take up this habit of reading books, which as we've mentioned has got a lot of benefits, then you need to set time to be able to do it. Yeah, I think being deliberate setting this time, mm -hmm. I would suggest start very simple. Just say 10 minutes a day. Either wake up a little bit early and then read a book, 10 minutes before you start your day, or just before you go to sleep, you can use that time, 10 minutes to start there. Then with time, of course, you might get more inspiration and motivation and even spend more time reading books, right? <laughs> you, you had mentioned, I think you wrote an article around this about how you can be able to incorporate this uh, around sort of your commute time, those kind of things. Can you please uh, make a mention more around this? There are different ways that you can be able to maximize your day. And one of the time that people waste a lot of, uh, one of the scenarios where people waste a lot of time is commute time. On average, here in Nairobi, people spend about two hours a day commuting. So if you're able to maximize or optimize that time of commute time by reading books, you will be surprised how many books you can read by the end of one year. Mm -hmm. So, on a normal working, uh, uh, or in one year, we have 250, 260 working days, Monday to Friday. Correct. If you multiply that by two, that would be about 520 hours. Mm -hmm. And if you just decide to read books during that time, you can clearly master two or three skills, only utilizing commute time. Correct. There are different ways of uh, consuming books. You can read a physical book, you can listen to an audio book and utilize that commute time. Yeah? Correct. Yeah, great. So, which other way can someone use to incorporate uh, this great habit? So, I recently wrote an article on uh, my 2020 reading list. Yes. Uh, and one way I'm trying to, so I've given myself a challenge. Yeah. Um, I found that I normally read about four to five books mm -hmm. in a year. I want to ramp that up to 24 books in a year. That is, I'll read two books um, in a month. Yes. So every single month I've dedicated myself to read two books. So I think one way that you can look at it is give yourself a very compelling challenge. Right. Um, that, that, that then will give you sort of the juice and the fuel to, to take on this new habit. Yes. Um, so consider giving yourself a compelling, a very compelling and uh, challenging uh, a challenge yes. that you can then take on. Um, yes, that's, that, that I would say is one way to, to, to look at incorporating it in your day-to-day -day life. Yeah, I think once you give yourself a challenge and go out there, you should be, you will be able to do much, sometimes even over and above what you uh, said. So put, give yourself a compelling challenge. By design, human beings are meant to strive. They thrive when there is a challenge, right? Correct. I think there's um, something else in your in your article. You talked about uh, the different books that you read, but you also mentioned about the AM Club, uh, the AM Reading Club. Yeah. Yes. Tell us about it and how also that can help someone get into the reading habit. Yeah. So one one way to do it is also join a, a book club. Um, and I'm happy to announce that uh, we launched one at the start of this, this year. So this is an online, a virtual based uh, book club mm -hmm. where I'll be sharing the books that I am reading every single month. And I'll also be sharing a summary and key takeaway that you can take on and incorporate. 
So I'll be happy if you can join me in this journey. This is one way that you can um, be able to be accountable to yourself and follow through on your goal of reading more. Um, so uh, I'll be happy to, 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 to bring you on board and uh, we, we, we can get on to this journey together. Yeah. I think the beauty about book club is that now brings you to a community of people who are reading books mm -hmm. and they help you, motivate you and keep you accountable in reading books. Okay. And so AM uh, Virtual Book Club is a good place to start. In the description of the video, we'll leave a link where you can be able to sign up for it. And uh, I think we can talk about one more book club, where we met, yeah? Yes. So there is an actual physical book club that we met. Uh, it's called uh, the LYP Readers and Leaders Book Club. Yes. Um, we meet once a month um, and we provide also details on how you can come on board. That's, that's also another venue where we will be sharing books um, that you can be able to, to take on and read. Um, and you find a community of other like-minded people that will help you through this process and, and begin growing um, in, 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 um, in, this, in, this, in this great habit that will benefit you in many ways. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, readers and leaders, that is where we bet and we have been able to create this uh, great uh, relationship. I just want to do a quick shout out to Francis Chege. He's the guy who, the founder of LYP, uh, the League of Young Professionals that even ended up bringing the Readers and Leaders Book Club and it facilitated us meeting. <laughs> yeah, and great leader, uh, leadership from um, Erastus Oko, a great leader, right? Yeah, yeah I think um, that is mainly it. We will uh, call it a day. I just want to introduce a new segment, um, just say it, um, who can you give a shout out to? Just uh, someone maybe you can want to appreciate, they have done a played a big role in terms of um, we talk about reading books and any particular book that you would um, advise someone to pick and start reading right away. So I think in terms of uh, the people that you've met through readers and leaders, so one of uh, the efforts that we do whenever we are doing uh, um, a book every month is there will be a presentation session. Yeah. Um, and that's why we are talking about the aspect of communication. Um, and we've got a lot of communication coaches that have helped us improve um, our presentation skills. Yes. How we present um, any piece of uh, content or information. And I want to give a shout out to Regina Ray. Yes. And uh, Alan Ringo. Right. Um, that they have, they have really held our hands through this process. And I think those those, those uh, reserve a, a big mention. Yeah, I think that's a great thing. Um, Regina Ray, Alan Aringo, I'll be getting, uh, reaching out to you. You will be coming to this uh, session here where we'll talk more maybe about communication, presentation, and giving you more values. Yeah? Um, giving you more value as uh, our listener, right? Yes. Anything that you'd like to add uh, as we close up? Um, yeah, I think... Uh, oh, I had asked which book would you recommend? recommend someone to start reading? A book that has had a big impact in your life? I think the most recent book reviews that we've done have been very phenomenal in terms of goal setting. Yes. I think it's very relevant now. Yeah. We are at the start of a new year, it's the start of a new decade. You're probably wondering, how can I set my goals and ensure that I follow through? Yes. So I'll make a mention of two, two books that I recently read. The first one is Your Best Year Ever by Michael Hyatt. And we've done a book review on the same. Yes. Both video and uh, I've, I've, I've written a blog post on the same. Uh, and then the most recent uh, book review that we did was Design Your Best Year Ever by Darren Hardy. So I'll mention those two books. Uh, please grab yourself a copy utilize them at this point when you're trying to set your goals for the for the for the year and also for the decade very great uh quick uh, two uh, i don't know two books but uh, i'll just say as much uh, several books have had different impact in my life i think i started with the uh, rich dad poor dad so if you haven't read poor dad rich dad make a point of reading them uh reading that book secondly there is uh, the compound effect by darren hardy I think that is also a great book that you can be able to read. But um, yeah, those will be, and in addition to that, the 10x rule by yes. Grant Cardone. Grant Cardone. Yeah, you can be able to read. So take a moment, go through those books, and um, hope you have a great year of reading and maximize this benefits, right? I think that is it. Thank you very much. 
I'll just mention this, like this video, leave a comment, let us know which is your best book that you have read, recommend it in the comments below. You can also subscribe to uh, my channel, Daniel Mutuku. Also ensure you press the bell button so that you can get notification each and every time we upload a new video. Otherwise, I really appreciate you watching through this video and have a great time. We are out.